Today, my extremely popular free energy effects plugin for DaVinci Resolve Proto is coming to iPad. But even if you're not interested in the iPad at all, you should still stick around because uh, as part of this move, I have reworked some of the installation for Proto. Previously, I had a main way and an alternate method. Uh, the alternate method still didn't work for a small fraction of people, but with this new method, uh, if you want Proto on any device, you should be able to get it. And even if you're already satisfied with what you have of Proto, you should still stick around because I'm also gonna lay out a little bit of the future of Proto and some of the big next steps I wanna take with it. We're starting here on my laptop and here I have this SSC Proto v2 zip file this is what you will now get when you go through either the main download or the alternate download link those are going to be running in parallel at least for a little bit but when i extract this uh, you'll see you get this folder and when you open that up you have three folders, V1, V2, and V2 alternate. V1 is just the first version of iPad. I completely replaced this when version two came out and version two is better in every way, but there are still some like stylistic differences that you might like in the old version. Uh, so you can always add this uh, on top of version two and it'll still work. And here is just a standard DRFX. You can double click that to uh, drag it right into Resolve. Of course, this does require like at least 17.2. All that standard DRFX stuff still applies but we're looking at version two. So you can see uh, this first one, V2, is just this one .lua file. If you aren't aware, um, I use a really cool uh, third-party fuse uh, called Tintensity. I've talked about that. That's made by another amazing creator. Um, I will link to his channel again in the description, but because of that, it can be a little tricky to install. Um, so I do have this main .lua, and in most versions of Resolve, you can just open up the Fusion page, and all you have to do is drag this .lua into the node section of the Fusion page, and it should give you a little pop-up, hey, installed, and you have to uh, close and open DaVinci Resolve to uh, complete installation, click OK, and then you just like reboot, and most of the time, you're up and running fine. But if that doesn't work for you, we have our alternate installation method. And here, this is uh, alternate or iPad because you do have to use a version of this method to install on the iPad, which we will show off very soon. But here you can see inside the alternate, I have a one DRFX and one .fuse file. That fuse is the entirety of this third party tool. But because we're dealing with these separately, um, all the other assets can just be this one DRFX file. You just double click that to install it like normal. And that will sort of away sort of like my half of the job. And now we have to look at installing this fuse. And the way we're gonna do that is uh, we're gonna come up to our menu bar up here, click on Fusion, come to Fusion Settings, and we are going to Path Map. Then inside Default, we are looking for fuses on this list. I can click that, and then we also have this icon down here to open that folder. You can see that will open this browser and it will come to this one fuses folder. I already have a copy in there, but if I didn't, that would just be empty. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna right click on that fuse folder and go to uh, show in finder. That should open up a new window. It does open up this fusion root folder, but fuses was selected so we can open that. Uh, you see I already have this one version, but if not, you could always like, drag that in here. If I do this, it'll ask me if I just want to replace them, which sure. So now we have sort of done the process that that .lua um, was supposed to handle for you. But because we go through the few extra steps to do this manually, it should work for everyone. And if I clear out of this, I already had that fuse installed, so that shouldn't have been an issue. But if I come over to generators, scroll down here, we have Proto V2, drop it right on a timeline, and we are good to go. Change up all these settings, something fun. Awesome, it's Proto. Now, let's talk about the iPad. I have that same sort of root zip here, Proto V2. I've saved this to just like a blank folder here on my on my iPad section. And all I have to do is uh, click on that once, it will unzip that, give it this main folder, I double click that, and we have those same root folders. And we can go through uh, those same steps. I'm gonna go right to this alternate method, open that. It is a little different on iPad now because it won't recognize that DRFX and install it. We still have to uh, manually drag that to the same place. So on iPad, uh, you have a little more steps, but at least they're sort of like uh, the same deal. You have to do the same process, but just drag them to slightly different locations. So on this first DRFX, I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna come down to move, and I'm gonna come to on my iPad, DaVinci Resolve, Fusion, Templates, and click move. It will send that file away. And now we have this fuse, and we're gonna drag this where it needs to go. Uh, it's not guesswork, but you just sort of have to like, uh, know the structure going on. Because on the desktop, we pulled out that path map to pull you to the exact location here. I'm gonna right click on that, go to move on my iPad, DaVinci Resolve, Fusion. And here, remember we had that root fusion folder uh, on the laptop. This is where we are now, but by default, there isn't a fuses folder here, but we can add one. I'm just gonna click this little button to add a folder, name that fuses, click on that, open up, uh, click move. 
that sends it away. And now I can open up uh, Resolve, make sure my effects library is open. I'm in my generators, scrolling down. I can mouse over Proto, and I'm not getting that pop-up that intensity is not applied. I can drag that right to my timeline, and Proto is working. We can open our inspector, uh, change up this source to whatever we like, hop over to our presets. All those are working great, and uh, yeah, it's Proto on the iPad. I can even uh, drag in a video clip here. I'm gonna hop to effects, uh, go back to video effects now, because remember, uh, Proto currently, stick around, um, is split into both the generator and the effect, so I can drag the effect right onto that, and it will use like edge detect and all these other things. Again, those same uh, customization options in the inspector working great. Hopping over to a user, we have uh, all those presets that you can dial in back on these main controls. Ooh, that's intense, how about that? That's cool. And now, any of the work you're doing on the go or wherever on the iPad, uh, you can bring the full power of Proto to that. Now, just a second ago, I did say uh, to stick around when I was talking about the two different versions of Proto. On the edit page, there is a version of Proto that is a standalone generator and the version of Proto uh, that is a video effect. But I don't plan to keep it that way for long. There were a few really cool features that were added in Resolve 18.1. And actually, this most recent small update, I think is like uh, 0 0.1, 0 0.2 or something. Uh, that polished up a few of those to now they're in a really great spot. So pretty soon, I intend to consolidate those two versions of Proto into one a master version with like toggles to switch between them. It will exist on the timeline uh, like the generator, but you'll also be able to, uh, within that preset, look at anything else on the timeline beneath it. It'll be really easy to hop back and forth between those extra like source elements and looking at uh, the clip itself. You'll be able to jump back and forth while keeping uh, all of your custom presets and stuff. And because it is that standalone generator, you can customize it however you want. And it's really easy to drag that to a power bin to save any of those changes for later. And all that customization uh, gets to this really uh, other exciting thing coming that I'm just going to tease a little bit. Back on this generator, we have this handful of presets. And all of these presets are only made uh, by changing the controls you have access to on this main controls page. There are a lot of them. It can be pretty intense, but just changing uh, these factors, you can get these wide variety of presets. I want to seriously beef up uh, this presets page, and I want the community to help me. It'll be a little bit of work on my end to sort of like uh, get those all into one version, but stay tuned for more details because I'm pretty sure I have it worked out how you can you know, customize Proto however you want, create new presets, save those, send them to me, and I will be able to integrate those into future updates to Proto. There's so much power in the controls that you have access to in Proto, and I think we should be able to work up some pretty cool stuff and you know, dramatically increase the number of really cool presets um, that are available for everyone using this free preset. Again, all those details will be in its own video, hopefully coming sooner rather than later, but it is still uh, very, very exciting stuff. I believe when I upload this update uh, to my main current site, it might've sent out an email to people who have downloaded it on that site. So whether you picked it up there or you know some of the past services I've hosted this on, head over to the site, uh, download it uh, either for like laptop or desktop or on iPad. It's it's really cool on iPad. And hey, if you really like Proto, uh, maybe you only know me uh, because of Proto, I have tons of other like free presets and some really cool paid ones as well. And uh, I'm actually getting really, really close to hitting 30K subs, really exciting. We're getting really close to the end of the year. Uh, probably won't make it before the end of the year, um, but it's coming soon, very exciting. So even though I don't say it very much, um, subscribing, always, always appreciated. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.